When I started college, I didn't know what I was doing. <coughs> when I went to class, I didn't know how, what the difference was between high school and college. I, I realized just in a short period of time that the professors really didn't care if I did my homework or not. But when I was in junior high and high school, some of the teachers cared enough to call my parents and tell them that I needed to get on the ball and I needed to do, uh, do different projects. But when I got into college, I didn't know anything about uh, how to, to uh, study on my own and do projects on my own and study even harder than I really needed to. And, and I made many uh, poor grades at the beginning. But I kept on working at it. And I kept on working at it and eventually I graduated three different times uh, with three different degrees. So you see, you can start out with something not knowing exactly what to do and you can end up successful. When I went in the Army, I had no idea what, uh, what I was doing. When I went to boot camp, I didn't know how to march, I didn't know how to shine my boots, I didn't know how to do a lot of other things that were required of a soldier. But I stayed with it, I kept on going, and, and in the period of three years, I, I uh, was promoted and cre increased in rank and became a, a combat veteran and was discharged with honors. See, I didn't know what I was doing when I first started. When I became a teacher in the public school, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> in fact, the principal walked me down the hall the first day of my, my uh, teaching career, opened the door, and there was 30 kids in there, and he pushed me in there, shut the door, and said, good luck. <laughs> but I worked on it until I became a good teacher. And I, and I kept watching other people, reading books, talking to, to teachers that were experienced to find out uh, how to conduct, uh, how to deal with discipline, how to deal with the curriculum and all those kind of things. When I became a pastor here 10 years ago, I, I really didn't know what I was doing. I, I knew I loved the Lord and I knew I loved people, but I really did not know what was all involved in becoming a pastor. Everything from from uh, mopping up uh, flooded uh, hallways on my first night here on a Wednesday <laughs> night. Uh, uh, we had a bad rain that flooded and came all in the building, and so that was our Bible study, how to use a mop in uh, the church. <laughs> but you know, after nine and a half years, the Lord showed me how to love people, how to minister to people, how to care for people, how to counsel people, and how just to, to, to take His Word and, and, and impart it to you in a simple way. In Philippians 2, 12 through 13, it says this. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, with respect, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do His good pleasure with you and for you. You see, God wants you to, to become a better Christian than you are today. He wants you to start working out. Not physically uh, exercise, even though some of us need that, I think. But, uh, but he, wants, he has put something inside of you that He wants you to work out into a, a life of, of joy and happiness and service to other people. In this sermon I'm not talking about working for your salvation because we know that salvation is a gift of God and, and that there's no, none of us in here deserve to have received uh, the salvation that we receive and Jesus said who would ever come into me and call upon my name they shall be saved so there's not a, a great amount of requirements for you to become a Christian outside of having faith the Lord desires that His people live out what God has already put inside them. And He has put a lot in you. You may not realize it, but you have years of, of training. You have years of personal experience. You have years of, of watching other people. 
succeed and fail. And you can certainly learn from both. And it will, if you will just observe how God works in, in other people's lives, you can see that He doesn't always take the, the smartest or the, the most popular or the most uh, talented. But He normally takes those of, uh, with, of us who will just say, God, I don't have much, but what I do have, I'll give it to you. Amen. To put it another way, God loves us the way we are. He loves us too much to leave us like we are. And He wants us to be just like Jesus. And that is, that's what God wants in your life. We're not, we're not talking about doing something that we can boast about and be proud about and, and uh, say, well, you know, I, I, I was a deacon in the church for 20 years or, you know, uh, I, I uh, was Sunday school superintendent for 10 years or I had this particular job in the church and, and I did it for so many years. Certainly if you've done those jobs and you've been selected to that position and you served it with, with humility and you served it with with uh, the, the desire to please God and help people, then certainly that's good. But he does want us to exercise, even though we're saved by faith, we, he wants us to exercise that faith and use that faith. In Hebrews chapter 11, it talks about all the different kind of people in there that God did things for after he selected them. So you're in a selection process uh, when you first get saved. Just like when I was in the army, I was selected. When I was a teacher, I was selected. When I was a, a pastor, I was selected. When I went to college, I was selected. But that's not the whole end of it. Sometimes we think when we come to church and we walk down the aisle and we ask the Lord to forgive us, and He does, uh, and we join the church, we're baptized, that, that is the, that's the end of the process. But it's only the beginning. He, he is working. He wants to work some things through you and out of you, and He's put things in you that He wants to, to get out of you. We're called to, to work out what God's already put in us. I want you to think this morning about some uh, things that God has given you a gift in of service. Now, some of you may and have even shared with me you didn't know what your gift was or you didn't know if you even had a gift. But I'm telling you, each of you have something to offer to Jesus. Amen. The, the little boy only had two fish and five loaves, but it fed 5,000 people. Many other people, Jesus told, uh, Jesus was challenged by uh, uh, the, the Pharisees and Sadducees and asking, did he pay taxes? And he told Peter, Peter, go down to the river and pull out the first fish that you catch and open it up and there'll be a, a coin in there. And you bring it back and it'll be enough to pay my taxes and your taxes. You see, it's not just, Jesus is not, uh, even though it is all about Him, it's just not about Him. He is trying to do something for you when you obey Him and you follow Him. Amen. Now when we ask somebody whether they're saved or not, or are they a Christian, what we're really asking them, have you made a commitment to Christ? Have you prayed a sinner's prayer? Have you asked Christ to come into your heart? But that's only the beginning of the Christian life. Salvation begins with regeneration, and we call it being born again. Jesus said you must, you must be born again before you can go any further. You know, you've got to be accepted in the college before you can go sit in the classroom. I mean, you've got to be, you've got to be sworn in into the military before you put the uniform on and they, and they, they train you. To, to serve the United States. But there's a, a, a point after you're selected that is, we call it in the Christian uh, faith, sanctification or setting ourselves aside for the service of God. In the Old Testament, they had certain uh, items that were in the, uh, uh, on the altar that were used for, uh, for worship. Today, we have... Uh, the, we'll be offering communion, the Lord's Supper. And we have certain items up here that are set apart just for that specific service to God. We don't take these cups 
and, and take them and use them anywhere else for any other thing except to worship God with. We don't uh, use things that belong to God to, to, and, 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 uh, to, to misuse them. And you're, you're set aside. You need to set yourself aside to serve God and say, God, I'm a vessel that you can use.